Hello everyone, my name is Ujwal Gandhi from SpatialCost.com and I'm back with yet another Spatial Analysis Challenge. Today's challenge is a bit simpler, but it still might be fun for some of you to work it out. So let's dive right in. So here I'm showing the data set in QGIS. We have two layers. We have one polygon layer of urban areas. So these are polygon representing the urban agglomerations of the world. Uh, this doesn't have any attributes or that identifies that urban area. Uh, so it just derived from a satellite image. So uh, we have another layer, which are the point layer of populated places. So we have, say here, this uh, point location is Mumbai. Each point location also has a column for population. Um, and there might be more than one point within each urban area. And the task is, can we assign the attribute of the point with the highest population to the polygon. That means if I have this polygon, let me show you the attribute table. Here's the attribute table. I don't really know what is the name of this particular urban area, but I have this point locations where I know the name of the place along with population. The population is contained in this pop max column. So I, I may have one, two or more points within each polygon and I want to assign the polygon name of the point with the highest population. And this is a kind of useful thing that you know, people have to do a lot when they are processing data or doing joins. So uh, let's see if you can figure out how to do this. Uh, as usual, you can use any spatial analysis tool that you want. Uh, you can use PostGIS, you can use QGIS, ArcGIS, whichever tool or programming language you are familiar with, you'll find the link to the data set in the video description. So go ahead and download the data and give it a try. If you want to see my solution, I'll explain it right after this. When I first heard of this problem, it seemed like a spatial joint problem with a twist. In a regular spatial joint, you'll pick one value of one particular feature within the polygon, you can do one to many joints, so you will just create duplicate features for each point that you would find. But in this case, we want to just pick one value by aggregating the values that are within it. Uh, the part that is tricky is that we need to consider two attributes. There is one attribute from which we want to pick the name, but there's another attribute which we want to sort the features by. Right? So uh, this is a great fit for the QGIS aggregate expression. If you're not familiar with the aggregate expression, I have a bunch of videos and articles explaining how the function works. And uh, we can just write a simple aggregate expression to compute this. I'll also show a Python-based solution a little later on in the video, but first let's just see how to work it out with the aggregate expression. I'm gonna just, for demonstration purposes, select this one feature. So we can just run our analysis quickly and we can see the result. As you can see, there are two but points here, there is Mumbai, which is of course the, the main uh, city that is part of this urban region. And then there is another point which is, has a lesser population. So we would have two points within this polygon, but we want to assign it the name Mumbai because that has the highest population. We're gonna use the field calculator. We'll say selected features only. That means it's, when it runs, it only will run on the selected feature. We'll name our output value name. This will be the text field. And here is where we'll write the expression. We'll use the aggregate expression and we'll fill the parameter. So we'll say layer. So which layer we want to join. This is the layer two from which we want to pick the features. So we are in the urban areas layer. We're going to pick the any 10 million populated places simple layer. Second, we want to, which aggregate do we want to use? Well, for now, I'm going to use uh, array egg, will just give us the list of all the values that we find. Expression, will uh, once we find all the features from the layer that matches our query, what do we want to pick from it? What's the expression that we want to run? Right now, I'm just going to pick pop max, which contains the population. Right? It's going to find us the population value from all the features uh, that we find. Next, we have the filter, which uh, we do not want all the features from the second layer. We want only the features that intersect the current polygon. 
in aggregate expression, we use this standard syntax where we say intersects, check if the geometry one intersects geometry two. The first one is the dollar geometry, which is the geometry of all the points. And we say pick the point where its geometry intersects the geometry of at parent. This refers to the current feature. Okay. And this closes. Okay. Uh, it stores the preview as null because this polygon doesn't have any features. Let's just go and find the preview of a feature which has got more than one feature. Okay, let's see. So we found kind of uh, a polygon which has three points inside and we got an array of their populations. If I just change it to name, you can see now this is the name of all the uh, places that are contained within that particular polygon. Now we want to pick the one which has the highest population. So somehow we need to sort this uh, values by population. Fortunately, the array uh, expression has one more parameter called order by. So we're going to add this, we'll say order by, and we can enter an expression. We say order by pop max. So don't give us any uh, order, just order them by population. That means in this region, this is the lowest population and this is the highest population. If I just change it back to pop max, you'll see they are sorted by population now. You can see this is sorted from lowest to highest. So we've got kind of a, uh, a list of places is sorted by population. Uh, we can only get it in ascending order, but that's totally fine. We have an array, so we can use some array functions to pick the last value. So I'm going to use the array function. There's a function called array get, which gets the nth value from an array. You want the last value. Uh, the array could have zero, one, two, three, uh, any number of items. So we'll just use negative one for the last one. Okay. So I'm going to put all the whole thing in array get and we'll say get. So now we got the name of the place with the highest population within each polygon. And let us test if this worked. Yeah. So we ran it only on one feature. So let's see the result. And you can see this one uh, gave us the correct answer, which is it picked the Mumbai for our particular selected feature. Um, so this works. This is a good first solution. But if you try to run it on the entire layer, this is a fairly large layer. Let me just show you how many urban areas we have. So we have 11,000 urban areas and we have 7,000 places. And that means for each urban area, it has to go and check all 7,000 features, whether they intersect it or not. So we'll have 11,000 times 7,000 operations. And that can take you know up to 30 minutes on a, even a very powerful computer because aggregate expressions do not use spatial index. If we want to be a little smart about it, we can use a spatial index and go much faster. So instead of saying we, uh, let's find all, take each point in the point layer and try to find whether it intersects with this uh, particular polygon. We can just use a spatial index, which is pre-computed and knows where each place is based on the bounding boxes. So we're gonna say, give me all the places which are within the bounding box of this Mumbai feature. It'll just give us all the candidate features and that goes very fast. And then we can only check those candidate features. So let's see how we can leverage spatial index and make this go much, much faster. To leverage the spatial index first, we'll just create a spatial index. So I'm gonna to go to the properties and we'll say create spatial index. And you can see this goes very fast. It's very fast to create a spatial index and that usually speeds up your workflow. So I've just created this. Uh, if you want to use the toolbox, there's a create spatial index tool in your toolbox as well. So do use that if you want to run it in a model, uh, in, within a modeler or in a batch process, et cetera. So our layers now have a spatial index in them. Uh, aggregate functions still cannot use the spatial index even though it has it. So those will not speed up even though we created a spatial index. But we can write some Python code within QGIS that can leverage spatial index. So I have written a processing algorithm within, in Python. Uh, which uh, processes this data using spatial index and does what we want to do. Uh, you can download that Python script from the video description. You can download it and save it on your computer. After that, you can just go to the processing toolbox, 
go to the scripts section and then say add script to toolbox and browse to the place where you downloaded the Python file from the video. And once you do this, you should have a new script in your scripts section here called conditional spatial join. Right? This is the, the script that I've written that processes and does this conditional spatial join. Let me show you what the script looks like. I'm going to right click and say edit script. This is a PyQGIS script using the processing API. We are we need to create a class. Here we are using this special class called QGIS processing feature-based algorithm, which is designed to uh, uh, for processes that work one feature at a time. If your processing algorithm that you're writing can process each feature independently without you know, wor worrying about other features, this is a better suited class for this. It will speed up your process. It will also is much simpler to write. Uh, we create a few parameters. So this parameter already has an input and output. We add um, the parameter for join there, which field you want to join, what condition. Since we are writing script, we can also ask people, do you want to sort by highest or lowest? So we want to pick the point with the lowest value or highest value, and then the condition field, etc. And in the main uh, function, which is the process feature here, we take each feature and we then find all intersecting features. Here we are using the QGIS feature request, which will find all the features within the bounding box of the feature. And this uses spatial index if this uh, exists on the layer. That means if we have a spatial index, this part where it just finds all the features. So when you say join layer dot get features, it is going to be super fast. It's not going to go and check all 7,000 points. It will go to the spatial index and ask, give me all the points within the bounding box of this feature. And then it's going to go and check whether that particular point really intersects the geometry. Well, or it, uh, it was a part of the bounding box, but it may not uh, intersect the actual geometry. So it's going to check the actual intersection only for a subset of the points there. So this goes super fast. And then we just go and find the features. We then go and uh, sort all the features based on what are the condition we've chosen. And finally, we return a new feature. Okay. Uh, let's run this and see how it goes. So here we can say my input layer is the urban area layer. This is the point layer, join attribute. We want to use the name attribute. Our condition is the highest and look at the pop max column for the condition. Right? Uh, building a tool like this allows you to run this on any layer. You can also share it with other users who don't really need to know how Python works. They can just use it on the layer. It's very intuitive all the, uh, you'll get right features. If you select the layer, you'll get the, get to pick the attribute from that layer and so on, right? Let's run this. Uh, remember the previous, without spatial index, this would take probably 30 minutes on my machine, but with spatial index, you can see this goes really fast and it finishes in 3.92 seconds. Let's check the results. Um, we'll just select this feature and open the attribute table. You can see each uh, feature has now a name if there was a point within it. And you can see the, the this feature we selected has Mumbai, right? So it processed large amounts of data very quickly. Also, since we built a processing toolbox, it was very intuitive and easy for the users to do it. In the video description, I've also linked to several other solutions I received from Twitter and LinkedIn. Most of these are using uh, Postgres and SQL. This kind of setup is uh, very easy and intuitive for SQL. And that's why it was also very easy for us to do it using aggregate function. Uh, but again, aggregate function doesn't use spatial index versus if you have a layer in PostGIS, you would use a spatial index and you can actually make this um, uh, as fast as we just did with Python. Hope this was informative and fun and I'll hope to see you in the next challenge. Stay tuned.